Hi there everyone, thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning service, our online service for the weekend of the 6th of September. It is good that you can be with us. It's a, a special weekend, this weekend being, being our Father's Day weekend and myself and Lindsay and a number of the other church leaders have been out delivering some small gifts to our dads across the church this week and it's been great to catch up with them in their own homes. So our, our hope, our prayer is that this weekend you would have a great time with, with your family and your, your family and your friends. And for all those people that, that may not be dads in, in one sense, but fill a fathering role to other people, we, we also want you to know that you're appreciated as well. So for all our dads um, and those in fathers' roles, we wish you a, a great weekend. Um, so a couple of things coming up in the life of the church. Uh, on Sunday the 27th of September, we will be holding a church picnic on the green here, at, here on the site on that Sunday. So starting at 11 o'clock. And it would be great given that we haven't been able to meet together in a large group for quite a while. It's a great opportunity being outside to be able to catch up with one another over lunch, let the kids play, and just have a few hours of connecting together as a church. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a great time for everybody, and so it would be great to get as many as we as we could possibly get there on the on the 27th of of September again, starting at 11 o'clock. Bear in mind, coming up also towards the end of October, is our annual general meeting that will um, take place most likely here at the church, but in the event that that changes, we'll certainly keep you up, up to date. So keep that one on your calendar, our, our annual general meeting towards the end of October the 25th. We also have coming up in October our church camp, and that's the last weekend in October, um, bridging into, into November. It'll be, again, a great time of, of, again, collectively spending time together at, at the place where we love to go, and that's at Gloucester Caravan Park. So if you haven't booked in to that, it would be a great idea to let us know in the church office whether you're attending, and we can, we can arrange to put you in the right direction in terms of how you book in for that. But again, it would be great to see as many people come along to that as we possibly could get. Uh, and what I would just like to say overall is that uh, just encourage you guys to, to press into um, to meeting together um, with people that are in our church so that we can sort of maintain those relationships and build those relationships. Have a look at the stuff that we're producing online for you maybe get some people together and, and share that share that in the same space. You might have a cup of coffee over that. Um, there's great opportunities to go and do that in, in your own homes. And so we would really encourage you to do that. So with that, we're going to have a, a bit of time of worship this morning and trust you have a, have a great week. Again, dads, have a great Father's Day and we look forward to catching up with you very soon. Thank you. Thank you.
Today, as we celebrate Father's Day, um, I'm being very honoured to be a father myself um, and have two loving children. Uh, I pray that uh, I've raised them well. Uh, time will tell <laughs> uh, in that space. Um, I've also had a great experience of being a child uh, under a father and being raised by my dad, and, and many of you know that, that story. But I also know that people today are hurting as we come to celebrate the idea of Father. And maybe the Father that they've had here on earth has caused them pain and hurt and we acknowledge that and I particularly pray for you. And I point, uh, no matter what your experience of your, heavenly, uh, your earthly Father, I just want to point you to our Godly Father today. And I'm going to do that today by particularly looking at Deuteronomy 6. Um, I'm not going to read the whole lot of it, but I encourage you. But I particularly want to look at uh, six, Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through to 9. Um, and I particularly want to unpack that 
um, and, and as as what the reading says. So let me just read a little bit to you for you, and uh, we'll get stuck into it. And it starts off, and it says, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength." These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit in the car, when you, sorry, when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down. And when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. The great passage here, we see that this is written with a particular uh, sense of um, you know, uh, what's happening here. The people of God have been spinning their worlds for 40 years. And they're, they're in the wilderness um, and they're on the verge of finally en entering into the promised land. The, obedient, uh, sorry, the disobedient generation have all gone, have all passed away now. And generation next or the generation now uh, is on this is in the in the scene, and Moses is wants them to go forward, but as he does that, he wants to give them some instructions about obedience, so that when they get there, they can make sure the parents understand their responsibilities. And what we note here that Moses doesn't instruct the parents or the families, the people about farming and shepherding and economics and construction when they get to the promised land. Or even battle plans, you know, he, 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 what he's first and foremost on his mind is to encourage God's heart in the families and in the people. He wants them to build a, 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 a faith and a foundation that will help them grow. And, I, and I'm really encouraged by that because as a father, that's what we all want, you know. Um, we all want to set a, 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 a foundation for our children to grow into. And not just fathers, of course. I'm talking to parents today as well and anyone else that's of a Christian uh, belief out there today. But I particularly want to focus in on fathers and encourage you in this space. And as we look at this passage, um, this passage is uh, one of the things it talks about is... Uh, um, this is the beginning of what's called the Jewish uh, Shema, which literally means hear, or we might say, listen up. It, it can also mean to listen um, intelligently and attentively and to obey. The Shema is a declaration of faith, a pledge of allegiance to the Almighty. It was recited um, in the Jewish custom when they first got up in the morning. It was the first thing that they thought about, and it was also the last thing, quite often, that would happen for the Jewish people in, in their passing away. But as we look at this passage today, I want to um, sort of break it into two sections, if I may. And the first one um, is about uh, love and, and the concept of having no other God but God. And here it, it is, right here in verse 4, it says, Hear, so listen. O Israel. So listen, O Maitland Baptist, might be more appropriate to us today. Or listen, fathers, or listen, parents. The Lord, our God, the Lord is one. So it's acknowledging that we, you know, uh, should have no other God but Him. And we should commit our lives to loving God with everything we got. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with your mind and your strength. This is what we're meant to do, to love our God with our whole being. And what an example that is for our children. First of all, to listen. I think that's an important one for dads to learn. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Father. You know, and then there's this sense of love, and not the emotional love that we see in the world, you know, I might love my car, but this sense of what true love is about, and our whole being expressing this idea of love outwards and one of the first things as we raise our children is that the children are going to look for uh, examples and we as parents or fathers need to show them how to love God where else are they going to see that you know in this time in this era as we are in COVID-19 you know probably the time this year 
uh, many of the families and children have spent less time in church than they ever have before. And so what the families, the fathers and the parents teach their children right now in their home is probably more important than ever. Now I always encourage you to, as a parent and family to be important to raising your kids under Jesus, under Christ to know God. And you've always had the church to help you in that by bringing them in and we could do things with them as a family. But in this season we can't do that or it's harder to do that, maybe better word. And your role as a parent is more important than ever and maybe even more important than the church and coming together. So I want to encourage you as we think about with all our being um, and all our strength and, and, and these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. So not just in our minds, but in our heart stands. You know, it's easy for us dads sometimes to, to be uh, intellectual about our faith. You know, this is what you've got to do and if you do this and this and this and this, that'll be right. We're problem solvers, aren't we dads? We like to fix it. Got to fix uh, things that may be going on with our kids' lives, and we want to fix it. We may want to fix things in our marriage, and that may drive our wives a little bit crazy, but I'll talk about that maybe some other time. But we've got to fix it. But here we have this commandment about to be in our heart, not just a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge of what true love and an example is to our children. You know, our children, as I said before, are going to... Um, need us as fathers and parents to lead them to Jesus, to show them an example of what truly loving God with all our being looks like. For where else are they going to see that? Where else but in our home? And as we continue on, we get this idea in this passage, and we move into seven, and this, this, this word is here, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at the table and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. In every aspect of our life, fathers, men, parents, we need to be diligently encouraging and pointing our kids back to Jesus. Do we do that? You know, when I look at this and I say, when we sit down at home, so maybe when we're sitting down at home around the meal time, what a great opportunity that is just to have a, a broad conversation, maybe about a passage or maybe about a, a certain belief and, and have a conversation with them. How often do you do that? Do you do that? Has it ever happened in your home? Talk about them, um, sorry, when you walk along the road. You know, when you're on a journey, do you get an opportunity to talk to your kids about Jesus and, and, and maybe ask them some questions or talk to them about the, your relationship and how that works out? You know, one of the things in my fond memory, we laugh about it in our house, uh, Chris um, travelling around with sport all over the place, always wanted to get in the car and talk. The radio would be on, you turn it off. You've, I'm sure if you've been around Maitland Baptist long enough, you've heard me say this. You turn the radio off because he wanted dialogue. He wanted to talk to us. And what a great opportunity that is uh, for me as a father to so into Chris and to talk to him not just about what I knew about my um, in my head but also about how I hopefully expressed my faith in my actions and my deeds to him firstly and also to others and when you lie down and what a, a, um, a great opportunity that is for us you know to when we fathers particularly uh, and as a thing with parents again, but when we're putting our kids to bed, it's a great opportunity for us to have a bit more of an intimate, deep conversation about our, our kids and their faith and where they're at. And a bit more deep and in depth about um, loving only God because things will come into our kids' lives, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, friends, boys, girls, hopefully not too soon. All these things will come in and will distract our kids and sometimes we, they forget about God and we as a parent, it's a great opportunity just to point them back in, in the quietness of the night before they prepare for bed. Have you ever done that? And when you get up, you know, when you get up in the morning, we've got this sort of energy and, you know, if you, especially if you're a morning person, you get this energy and you, so you can set the tone for your kids for the day. 
You know, by sharing God's word with them, maybe, or just a, a word of encouragement that they get to take with them as they go out into the world, because the world is full of opportunity and idols. A bit like uh, the promised land was going to be uh, for the Jews, it was full of idols. But they were stepping into that. And we our children are going out into that. And we need to be, as parents and fathers, I encourage you to be actively involved in this. I haven't always got that right. You know, you can talk to Nick and she'll say, well, sometimes, Lindsay, you know, you, you just didn't cut in there enough and left it to me. And, and I'm thankful for Nicole in there. But as, as a father, you know, our role is to uh, encourage and our role is also to lead and to lead by example. And this is where, as we look uh, at, at, you know, seven to nine, this word impress. So to press into, you know, if, if we get something and we press and we leave a mark, it's there to help us remember. It's there to help us to look at and go, oh, I remember that. You know, you might have a scar and you go, oh, I remember that. That's from that incident. I've got a scar on my right knee and I remember that incident of falling off my motorbike and having to go to hospital. It's impressed into me, that memory. And the same is for our kids, you know, as far as if we impress our kids into God's word, and encourage them, then it's going to stay with them and will affect their lives. So as we impress and as we sit down and encourage you fathers to not just be the fathers that have the intellectual uh, in your head, as I said, but be the practical father to walk along and to have those conversations with the kids and always point them back to Jesus. And I love this here in 8. Tie, um, Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your house and on your gates. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Kids, uh, fathers, we're going to write all this scripture down. We're going to uh, put it all over our door frames. We're going to tie it to our kids' hands and our hands as symbols of who we worship and who we belong to. And a great uh, visual reminder to people that we belong to God and that we worship God. How would you like that? The kids probably wouldn't want to do that, dads or mums. But it's a great visual reminder that for us as parents and fathers to encourage our kids and to every aspect of our house and our lives, we need to be sowing into scripture. Now I remember as Christopher and Vicar growing up, we had the door frame probably like many other houses and we marked it off, you know, probably monthly or bi-monthly. We mark off the height, uh, and it was there to remind us of how their growth was c coming along, you know. Um, and it was always a task to to achieve to be taller than Dad. And, and thankfully, uh, I've still got the title, so I'm grateful for that. But this is what's going on here. This this sort of symbolic gestures are there for um, us of the Jewish custom to remind their family of who they are and who they belong to. You know, quite often I, 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 um, I see young adults in our church and uh, you see them, they've got writing on their arms, you know, and sometimes it's scripture. Um, Victoria, for example, has a Bible verse uh, or a passage, um, you know, Be Still, uh, written on her wrist. And it's a, it's a physical reminder for her that in life she needs to be still and, and, and focused and, and centered in God. And so the reminder here for us as parents and as a father is to help our kids grow, not only through love and, and being an example, setting an example for love for them to follow, but also um, the example on how we live it out. Not just living it out, but talking to them about it. Now, one of the greatest challenges that we face in the modern church is how do uh, we help our kids to follow Jesus? And I love to say, this is, you follow this formula, it will work. But sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes we we all know families where they've been raised in a Christian home for whatever reason they haven't followed Jesus on in their adulthood. Maybe they'll come back and we pray that they will. But as a father, our role and as a parent, our role as we look in the Deuteronomy and and, and as um, they were preparing to go into the promised land and, and as... Um, uh, you know, Moses was preparing his people. He encouraged them to always to love no other God and to live it out in a way that was true. 
and, and as I said before, you know, at this time is more uh, essential for us as parents and particularly fathers that I encourage you to be uh, to to actually be actively being the example that we need to be as we looked at this part of scripture. You know, we need to be living it out so our kids see those behaviours and they see it as part of their normal life experience. And I want to really encourage particularly fathers today to to be the leader and, and lead by example. Yeah, our words and our actions need to line up. It's not always easy. Sometimes they miss each other and, and I've been guilty of that in the past myself. I'm just ask my kids or they will certainly attest to my failures. But I pray that in that they will also testify to the way that I've led them and drew them into God. So I just encourage you fathers today, uh, as in Deuteronomy, as you set your children free uh, into the promised land, set their future to build this foundation for them, to draw them into God, but no other God, and to draw them through love, but to set the, also the example of how they work it out, and let the conversations be always about Jesus in your home. God bless. Look forward to catching up with you sometime soon. Enjoy Father's Day, what's left of it. As I close, let me just pray for us. Dear God, we thank you for your message today. We pray as fathers that we will step up to the post and be the example of showing how to truly love you with everything we've got, all our being. Lord, but also not just to love you, but to put that, act, that, that love into action, Lord, and to, you know, every aspect of our day to be drawing and pointing back to you through our actions, our deeds, our conversation, what we write, what we think, what we watch. Help us to be the example for our children, Lord, as fathers that they need to see. Help us to build a foundation for them uh, that is strong and that you are that foundation, nothing else from the world, Lord. We thank you that we get to celebrate Father's Day today, wherever we may be. And we pray, Lord, that we'll always look to you as our Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Mayland Baptist. Uh, talk to you shortly. Goodbye.
Jesus.